Welcome. In this short tutorial, we will see how to install MySQL database management system. But before we install it, we'll see why MySQL as a database for this course, why did we choose it? We choose it for four reasons. It is supported by Oracle, which ensures reliability and durability, which will be very important as we start using databases very often. It supports multi-user access. That means a lot of users can be created in this, in this database. It supports multiple storage engines. Depending upon what hardware system we use, the storage engines can be, sub, uh, can be different as well in MySQL database. And very important, it is very, very widely used across the industry. So that gives us a, a network effect that since a lot of other people use it, so we also use it, then our formats would be compatible with other users as well. So that makes MySQL as one of the top choice to use as a database management system in this particular course. There are three factors to consider before installing any database management system specifically for MySQL. The first factor is the operating system that on which you will install. In this tutorial, we will cover Windows, but you can install MySQL using almost a similar steps on Mac OS or on Linux. The second factor to consider is what to use to install MySQL uh, there are a lot of other, lot of third party tools available in the industry which will help you to install MySQL. We will use the official MySQL installer, which is a very popular choice to install MySQL database management system in this tutorial. The third factor to consider is what are the features to use in MySQL? So we'll see a lot of other, lot of features are available in MySQL, whether you want to install it locally, whether you want to install it on a remote server. Uh, and there are a lot of other features that may be relevant to us. As the time comes along, we will keep talking about that. For now, we will use one of the most important installation feature, which is we will install the MySQL database server on our local machine. Say, for example, your local laptop. Now, these are the four high-level steps we will use to install MySQL database management system. First, we will download and install MySQL installer. Second, we will use this installer to install a few important components of MySQL database management system. The first will be the MySQL database server. The most important component, that's where we will host all the databases that we will create for using in our course. MySQL Workbench is the graphical user interface which allows us to interact with the databases that we will create in database uh, management server. And then there are other important components uh, as the time comes along in the course, we will talk about them. One is called as MySQL shell, which is like a command line prompt, the black screen with which you can directly interact with the database server without having to install any graphical user interface like Workbench. MySQL router, which helps you to connect your database server with remote graphical user interfaces or any other uh, third party uh, clients that we will uh, use in the forthcoming lectures. Then the third step would be to configure the installed MySQL database server. And then the fourth and the final step would be to use MySQL workbench and connect with the MySQL database server. So these are the four steps that we will perform today. So let's get to it. What we will do is that we will directly go to Google. We will search for download MySQL installer. The first link that comes along here, which is download MySQL installer, we will click on it which is the official link, as you can see, dave.mysql.com. That's the official link from where we can install the installer as well as the other components of MySQL database management system. I am going to download the first bit here, which says Windows X86 32-bit. Depending upon my computer right now is 32-bit, so I'm installing the 32-bit one. If your computer is 64-bit, you will install that. So I'm going to click on download now. When I click on download, it shows you this MySQL community downloads. It, allow, it asks you to create an Oracle account. For now, I'm going to skip it. And so I'll just click on no thanks, just start my download. And it downloads it over here. You can see it. So I'm going to click on it. It'll start to install it. It'll ask you some, for some permission, say yes. Remember, you should have logged in as an admin or your local machine in order to install MySQL database management system. So it's going to take a few seconds. And again, it may ask you for some permission. Please go ahead and give that. And then it will give you this prompt which says it's about getting done. 
So now we are inside MySQL installer. It is asking you to choose the setup to install. There are a lot of different setup options here available. For simplicity, we will just go ahead and install the full version, which will basically install all these components. The two very important components that we are right now interested in is MySQL server and MySQL workbench, which will allow us to graphically connect with the MySQL server. And then there are a lot of documentation, help documentation, samples and examples, which are also going to be installed. So I'm going to click on next. When I click on next, it will look for some requirements. And if there are certain requirements in your machine, in your laptop, which are failing, it will try and install those requirements as well. And that's one of the benefits of using MySQL installer. So I'm just going to click on execute. Do not click on next right now. Please click on execute so that it, in, it can install all these requirements which are re important for MySQL database management system so, uh, to work on your machine. So I click on execute and then it's going to start downloading these different components which are required and it may ask you to install certain uh, components which are important for da database management system to work. So I'm just going to click on OK and now it starts to install the requirements which are important for installing database management system. So it may take some time, be patient, but this is an important step. It will install these components which are required for DBMS to function properly. Now here it says setup successful for the requirements. So I'm going to click on close. Now it's going to install the other components. So just be patient there. If there is an agreement prompt, please go ahead and accept it. Once it is done, it will give you this prompt, click on finish. It may not give all these prompts, it may depend upon your machine as to what all components were already there and what all components MySQL server installer tried to install on your machine. So I click on next, it may give you another prompt saying one or more product requirements have not been satisfied. That's fine, click on yes so that it can be installed. So now it says these are the components which are ready to be installed on your machine. Click on execute. And then it will start downloading. You will see the progress as well here. Do not ab worry about these try again. For some of these things which may come try again, we will try them again uh, if you get this uh, message. The very important components which are right over here, the first one, first two, MySQL Server and Workbench. For now, that those are the two very important components that we are concerned about. Now once it is downloaded, once these packages are downloaded, then we will try and install them. So you would, you would have seen the progress bar showed you progress first for downloading and then for installing. So just be patient here, especially the server and the workbench may take a little bit of time. So if you now notice the two very important components are done, MySQL server installation as well as downloading it done for workbench also it's done. Now it is trying to install My, MySQL shell. So now if you notice, most of the components are done. If you want, you can give a few of them try again. So we'll try to download these again. And if they get downloaded, it's fine. Otherwise, the two important components that we were interested to download right now, this MySQL server, as well as MySQL workbench, they are done. So we will go to next. Then it will ask you to configure these two products, MySQL server and MySQL router. MySQL server, we will definitely configure. So let's go to next. Now it says, what kind of installation do you want to do? Standalone, that means you want to stand alone, uh, install on your local machine, or you want to do it in like a cluster, which is more like client server architecture that we will discuss later. For now, we will go with standalone MySQL server. Then it will ask you to configure the networking here. Since we are installing locally here, so we will not touch these uh, options for now and we'll go to next. Then it says what kind of authentication, very important authentication method that you want to use. If you use a strong password encryption for authentication, you have to remember a longer password, a little more complex password. Or if you want to use a legacy auth authentication method, then it will allow you to create a simpler password. For now, since we're installing locally and since we're going to do a lot of hit and trial, I want to make sure that we do not forget the password. So I'm going to go with legacy authentication method for, to do for now. And when I click on next, it'll ask you what is going to be the root password. Uh, you give your whatever root password, but do remember uh, to write it somewhere so that you do not forget what you have used here because we will use it 
when we connect to MySQL database server later, it says weak, I have kept a very simple password for now. Then it says how MySQL server service would be shown on your machine when it's working. So it's I have said I have said that the default name is fine, Windows service name, MySQL 80, because MySQL server will work as a Windows service. If you want to understand what Windows services are, you can just Google on this word Windows services and you will get a lot of information on that. For now, I'll also select one very important thing here, which says start the MySQL server as system startup. Because we are learning MySQL database as, uh, as a base database in this course, I do not want to be hassled by starting the service again and again. So I will just keep it enabled, keep it checked so that when the system starts, it will automatically start. Then I'll go to next. Then it will apply these configuration. I'll say execute. Starts to applying these configuration now. It will give you some prompts here which will say services list changed, services list changed and uh, just you don't have to do anything, just keep an eye. Click on finish. So now you're ready to configure. So I click on next. I will not configure the router right now because again we are installing locally. We are not connecting with a remote machine. So I'll click on next. Then it says start my SQL workbench after startup. We will do that. I finish. It will give me this command line prompt right now and it also will give me something called as MySQL Workbench which is a graphical user interface tool to connect with the MySQL database server. So I will keep it on. I will in fact expand it. So now I can see here on the bottom left hand side of my screen that I have a local instance of MySQL 80. MySQL is 80 meaning 8.0 is the version of the database that I have installed. So if I click on this icon here, this box here, then what this MySQL workbench will do is that it will establish a connection with the database server that we have installed. So if I click on this thing here, it will ask me to give the password. Now remember the password that we had given at the time of installation. I'll give the same password here and this time I'll save the password in Volt assuming I will be the only user for this machine. So I click on OK and now it opens the connection with my SQL database server and we are ready to start or uh, start creating our first database and start writing SQL queries as well. So we'll stop at this point of time. I'll just quickly review the steps that we did. So we downloaded and installed my SQL server installer Using that installer, we installed a lot of components. The two very important components that we installed here were MySQL database server and MySQL workbench. MySQL workbench was the graphical user interface and connect with the MySQL database server. The other components that we installed were MySQL shell and MySQL router. The third step that we did here was that we configured the MySQL database server and we gave passwords if you remember. And then we started MySQL Workbench and we connected with the MySQL database server. So that's where we will stop for today. So if you would have any questions or if you face any problem in the discussion forum, please post your question. Thank you. Thank you.